Hello students, uh, very good morning and welcome to IFS. I hope all of you are doing well. So uh, basically today we're going to learn about quantum mechanics of course. Uh, but the fact is I've got some announcement to make. Uh, the first one is the offline batches of CSR UGC net is now available at price 20,000 only and it's getting started from 1st November. The next one says, as you all probably would know, but still I'm saying this, that in Pune you had your classes, your offline classes, but now on in Jodhpur also, there is a branch in of IFS where we have initiated the batches of ASIR. So definitely you can join this. I mean, the people who are basically the north part of India, the Jodhpur branch will be quite near to them. They can stay more close to their home. So in accordance with your convenience, you can join. Uh, the third one is that, of course, the 70% discount in all MSc courses, all master's courses. And uh, don't forget that the offer is valid till 22nd of October. 22nd of October. So you might get, you will get 70% discount on all the courses of masters, like JAM, CUT, and all those sorts of things. And there is these two books, and which are basically the subject wise PYQs, I mean the previous year question papers. So the subject wise PYQs are available only at price 500, and these are for CSR physical science. So I hope that. This offers will help you in your preparation. So now we can move. Well, very good. So probably in quantum mechanics, uh, the things about which we will talk today is variational principle. Today we're going to talk about variational principle. Variational principle. What is variational principle? We will come back to the point later. First of all, you tell me, what do you mean by quantum mechanics? What is the basic thing we are always after in quantum mechanics? It's the fact that we need to know the Hamiltonian of a system. Jaseki, I have told you thousands of times earlier that in classical mechanics, there was Newtonian mechanics, then we get shifted to Lagrangian mechanics just because it was the scalar thing and more easy to deal with. And similarly, after that, the Hamiltonian dynamics because there are the differential equations are of first order. That's why it's rather easy to deal with. So whenever we went for the quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics, we took the Hamiltonian approach. So all we are interested is to know the Hamiltonian edge of the system, edge of the system, so as soon as I know the Hamiltonian of the system, I can solve the Schrodinger equation. And after solving the Schrodinger equation, I know the eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian, which you might uh, prefer to call it the eigenfunctions, the, or the energy eigenfunctions, and their corresponding energy eigenvalues. I mean, if you know what is the energy eigenfunction of this Hamiltonian, then you know that how the system will evolve with the passage of time, how the time evolution will happen for this system. I mean, suppose you know that for this Hamiltonian, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4, you have solved the Schrodinger equation, h psi is equals to partial differentiation of t, psi of t. This is psi of t. Psi of t. You know, this is the Schrodinger equation, and this will get splitted into two parts. One part is the time part, the solution of which is very trivial. It's e to the power of negative of i e n t by h cut. And this part, the time independent part, which you might prefer to call it the time independent Schrodinger equation, that is h psi equals to e psi, h psi uh, is equals to e psi. Basically, I write these two sides differently because this is a function of time. So I might prefer to call it like this. But this is just the psi wave function. 
and so h psi equals to e psi. That's all. This is the time independent Schrodinger equation. As soon as you get these two things, you write the total solution psi of t as the psi t to the power of negative of i e n t by h cut. i e n t by h cut. Now, uh, let me give you a simple example of infinite potential well. You know the Hamiltonian. For an infinite potential well, you know the Hamiltonian. This is your infinite potential well, of course. And I'm drawing the asymmetry cases. That was 0, A, infinity, infinity. You know the Hamiltonian H is equals to what? The Hamiltonian H is equals to P square by twice of M. Plus V of X. Now tell me, V of X is the potential. The potential is infinity for X greater than A, for X less than 0, and the potential is 0 in between X is greater than 0 but less than A. When the value of X is greater than 0 but less than A, then the potential is 0. And when the value of x is other than between 0 to a, the potential is infinite. So I know the potential. I can solve the Schrodinger equation. And after that, I am getting the state as like psi, if you want me to write it down, then psi of x comma t, if I write it in the position basis, that is the wave function term. Probably all of you might know that definitely, uh, if there is anything which is very general in quantum mechanics, that is the ket notation. Uh, when I do the classes in my actual offline classes, I always tell, I always just use the bracket notation because that is the most general notation. Whatever you call wave function is nothing but the projection of the ket psi of t into the position space. Projection of the ket psi of t into the position space is actually written as like psi of x comma t. That is the thing. But, uh, okay, fine. So I'm not going into that sort of matter right now because I am considering that you people know this sort of things. So psi of x comma t equals to root over of 2 by L sine n pi x by L. Of course, I'm talking about one dimension. e to the power of negative of i e n t by h cut. And you, of course, you have to take the summation over all the states, all the eigenstates, uh, because you know that uh, in second order differential equation, if C, uh, psi 1 is a solution, psi 2 is a solution, then c1 psi 1 plus c2 psi 2 is also a solution. That's why summation over n. And of course, e n is equals to n square pi square h cut square divided by 2m l square. So of course, you know this, for an infinite potential well, you can, you know the Hamiltonian, and as you know the Hamiltonian, as you know the Hamiltonian, you can solve the Schrodinger equation, you can solve the Schrodinger equation, and then you can find out the uh, eigenkets, or maybe the wave functions, and the energy eigenvalues. So as you know this, so you know how the system evolves with time. I mean, if you know the wave function at time t equals to t1, then you know the wave function at some later point of time, t equals to t2. This is all you know. So that's a very simple recapitulation of what you do in quantum mechanics, what we are basically interested in quantum mechanics. But let me tell you one thing. <clears throat> max to max, these are some very one particle system. But if I talk about the molecules, if I talk about the molecules or maybe some atoms, so in hydrogen atom system, there was, it's a one electron system. It's a one electron system. So hydrogen atom is a one electron system. So in a one electron system, what is the dimension? It's a one dimensional Schrodinger equation for infinite potential well. I mean, if I take it as like only x, if I take this as only x, so that's a one dimensional system. But if we talk about some sort of, say hydrogen atom, so that's a one electronic system. Can you please tell me that what is the dimension of Schrodinger equation that you have to take in hydrogen atom problem? Okay, Aarti is there. Good morning. Tanushree is there. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, could you please tell me what is the dimension of the problem when we are discussing the one electronic hydrogen atom? What is the dimension of the problem? Come on. What is the dimension of the problem? That is three-dimensional. If we talk about the hydrogen atom problem, the problem that you all the students solve, it's a, it's a what? It's a 3D, three-dimensional problem. It's a three-dimensional problem. But in research, the kind of molecules we deal with are not such uh, cute molecules, like one-dimensional systems, three-dimensional systems, one electronic systems. You don't get these sort of molecules. Suppose, let me give a very simple example. If we talk about carbon dioxide, CO2, if I talk about this, could you please tell me, could you please bother to tell that what is the minimum dimension of the Schrodinger equation 
that is needed to solve the Hamiltonian for the system? Could you please tell me? What is the dimension of Schrodinger equation for this? What is the dimension of Schrodinger equation for this problem? So you have to find out the number of electrons it has. Well, carbon, carbon has six electrons. Carbon has six electrons. Oxygen, oxygen has eight electrons. Now there are two oxygen and one carbon. That's why eight plus eight plus six that gives you 22 electrons. Am I right? That gives you how many electrons? That gives you how many electrons, brother? Tell me. Fast, quick. That gives you 22 electrons. That gives you 22 electrons. So, just a simple molecule, very simple molecule, the carbon dioxide, only for carbon dioxide, if you count the number of electrons, then you get it's a 22 electrons exists in this carbon dioxide. So could you now please tell me what is the dimension of the Schrodinger equation that you need to solve this? <clears throat> for each electron three dimension, again it's a 3D system, each electron will be in three dimensions. So for each electron you need three coordinates. That's why 22 multiplied by 3 equals to 66. Equals to 60. Six. Very good. It's a 66 dimensional Schrodinger equation. So do you think you can do this? Can you solve 66 dimensional? See, in hydrogen atom, uh, it was a three dimensional Schrodinger equation, but you people burst into tears solving out solving those equations because those legend of polynomials, Laguerre things and all those sorts of things came and uh, you people got lost into that sort of gigantic maths. But now it's a 66 dimensional Schrodinger equation. Do you think you can solve it? Can you solve it? Tell me. Can you solve the 66 dimensional Schrodinger? I mean, I mean, of course. Well, so let me tell you something. You're a physicist. You're a physicist, so that's why you should talk like a physicist. You're a physicist, you should talk like a physicist. What you would say? Sir, yes, I can. And it, it can be solved in principle. In principle is a very tough word, my student. In principle is a very tough word. In principle means it can be solved in principle. Of course, if you give it some uh, maybe say uh, 10 days, 20 days or maybe one year. So definitely you can solve it. The six, uh, six dimensional Schrodinger equation you can solve it. But definitely in research, we are interested into very quick answers. We're interested. So I have a problem. I need to know what is the energy of the state. So I need a very quick answer. Now you will uh, sit to solve the 66 dimensional Schrodinger equation for one year. Definitely that's uh, not something I'm looking for. That is not of much importance. So I need a very quick answer that how to solve it. Should I solve it? Can you solve it? Well, it is not possible in general. I mean, uh, it is possible in principle. I mean, it can be solved. Uh, if you give it enormous amount of time, you can solve it. But uh, like we are not, we don't have that much time while we're doing research. We need a very quick answer. So how will I do it? And let me tell you one thing. Uh, in my master's project, uh, I had some sort of an idea about how we do this sort of things. So uh, basically, you will see like people who are doing from masters over here, they know like we have taken condensed matter as their master project or material science or something. They would know that uh, like in case of uh, like uh, the molecules that we have mostly in our um, uh, research are mostly the organic molecules, mostly the organic molecules and they have a very gigantic structure, very big structure. So in case of an organic molecule, you will see the number of electrons are enormously high. So carbon dioxide is a very cute molecule, you see, carbon dioxide is a very cute molecule and in carbon dioxide there are 22. Okay, good morning Devika. Very good morning. Carbon dioxide, there are 22 electrons. So total 66 dimensional Schrodinger equation I would be needing to solve it. But uh, actually when you will go for research, so suppose your guide have said, you, okay, okay, find out a molecule and then we will start the research. So now you have find out the molecule and it's an organic molecule. It has a very gigantic structure. Suppose it has uh, 86 electrons. 86 electrons. Suppose that molecule has 86 electrons. So what is the number of coordinates you need to, uh, number of coordinates of the Schrodinger equation you need to solve? 86 multiplied by 3. This will be the dimension of the Schrodinger equation you need to solve to know the energy spectrum of that molecule and to know the 
uh, energy wave functions of that molecule, which is in principle not possible, which is in principle not possible. Okay, fine. So where, where was I? Yes, uh, so it's, a, it's a, like a, if you have a molecule, suppose in your research, you got a molecule which has 86 electrons, which has 86 electrons, so 86 multiplied by 3 is the dimension of the Schrodinger equation you have to solve to know the energy state of that molecule, to know the energy state and wave functions of that molecule. So that is a very tough thing, of course. That's a quite tough thing. We don't do that sort of things in general because in uh, research you need to know it very quickly. So how will I do it? Tell me, how will I do it? The basic approach is we don't actually solve Schrodinger equation. We go for some sort of an other method. If without solving the Schrodinger equation, I can tell you the answer. We go for some sort of other methods. If without solving the Schrodinger equation, I can tell you the answer. So that sort of ways are called is one of that sort of ways is variational principle that without solving the Schrodinger equation, if uh, uh, I have to tell you the energy of that system, so variational principle is definitely the most eligible candidate at hand. So definitely we should use variational principle. I mean, if you have got a multi-electronic system where the number of electrons are very, very high, enormously high, so that's why the dimension of the Schrodinger equation will be very, very high. And that's why we need to switch to something else because Schrodinger equations, of course, we can solve it and it will give us the exact energy eigenvalues uh, and the wave functions, but we are not quite interested in it now because it is very much time consuming. So we have to see something else. We have to shift ourselves to something else so that it will give us the results are more or less not quite accurate, but the results which we get is more or less close to the accurate value. Okay, in a very short period of time, in a very short period of time. So tell me how will I do it? Tell me how will I do it? So it's the variational principle. Of course, there are some softwares uh, which are actually there uh, by help of which uh, probably would know VNL is there and uh, Virtual Nano Lab and there is a call software called the Goss View. I know that I probably you might have heard about this sort of, sort of softwares. So basically, <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is that uh, there are some softwares actually what the question we do ask from that software okay sometimes while uh, doing the research we need to know what is the stable configuration of that molecule with which we will do the research what is the stable configuration of that molecule okay Aarti. okay thank you Aarti. thank you very much so uh, actually uh, we were talking about this and you see that uh, when we are talking about the, so basically, uh, suppose you have the molecule, right? Now you know the molecule. Now you need to know what is the basic structure of that molecule. Just like if I want to tell you about my research project, so I will, and then I have to sandwich the molecule between two AU electrodes, gold electrodes. So I need to know what is the ground state structure of that molecule. I mean, what is the stable structure? Stable structure means the ground state energy of that molecule. I need to know. So how would I find this out? Should I solve the Schrodinger equation? No, because it's an organic molecule. It means gigantic molecules, many number of electrons. Schrodinger equation will be enormously tough, not possible to solve. So how will I solve it? By the variational principle. Actually, it uses the density functional theory. But the backbone of density functional theory is the variational principle. The backbone of density functional theory is the variational principle. People who are doing a little bit of research, they would know that density functional theory, DFT, so the backbone of DFT is the variational principle. What it does? What it does? Come on, tell me. What it does? How do we determine the ground state energy of a system by variational principle? What it does? What the software actually does? Well, what it does, the software chooses the wave functions. Suppose it has some sort of inbuilt uh, trial wave functions, we call them. It has some inbuilt trial wave functions. Suppose there are uh, lots of trial wave functions basically and uh, that software uh, chooses trial wave function and it calculates the expectation value of the Hamiltonian for that system. It calculates the expectation value of the Hamiltonian for the system. 
So suppose the software has some sort of trial wave function, psi t, it has a box. The software has a box where there are many size, where there are many size. So this is my software. So software will, what the, what the software will do? It will take the first inbuilt wave function. It will calculate the expectation value of h and it will write down the value in this table. There is a table. It will write down the value in this table. Then it will pick another wave function, which is another trial, trial wave function. It will take that value. It will calculate the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. So why we are calculating the expectation value of the Hamiltonian? Because we are interested in finding out the ground state energy. Because we are interested in finding out the ground state energy. But so when we are trying to find out the energy, I have told you, like uh, in uh, like probably you would know that expectation values can never be the never be equal to the actual measured values because measured values are the eigen values of that operator. But yes, expectation values gives you more or less the idea or with some plus minus error that what value you can possibly get. Uh, but I told you that in quantum mechanics, when you do the measurement, so definitely expectation value is not the measured value. The measured value will be always one of the eigen values of that operator. But just let me tell you this. So what do you do? What the software will do? It will, there, is a, there are some lots of trial wave functions. It will take a trial wave function. It will calculate the expectation value of h. And whatever value it will get, suppose it has got a, so it will write it a. Then it will take another trial wave function. It will calculate the expectation value of h. If it has got b, then it will write b in the table. It will take another trial wave function. It will calculate the expectation value of h. It will, if, if it has got c, it will, it will write c in the table. It will take another trial wave function. It will calculate the expectation value of H, which means Hamiltonian. If it has got D, it will write D in the table. So like this, the software, what will do? The software will try to take the wave functions of the inbuilt wave functions that is already given to the software by the manufacturer. <coughs> it will take the wave functions. It will calculate the expectation values of the Hamiltonians. And then it will write down the uh, values, what, whatever the expectation values it has got. Okay. Now... Now what it will do, the minimum, suppose it has got the expectation value as like 6, 7, 13, 2, 8, like this sort of expectation value it, had got, it has got. So the minimum expectation value out of this, suppose it has got 2000 inbuilt wave, wave functions, just saying like for, I'm not saying like it is the exact uh, thing, but I'm just saying suppose it has 2000 inbuilt wave functions, so it will take all the trial wave functions and it will calculate the expectation value of H. It will take all the trial wave functions and it will take the, it will calculate the expectation value of h and after calculating the expectation value of h it will write down the values over there like suppose uh, after taking the first wave function it has got 6 then 7 then 8 then 13 then 2 then 4 then 6 like that <clears throat> then out of those 2000 results out of those 2000 expectation so you have measured the expectation value of the hamiltonian so what you have got is the average value of energy what you have got is the average value of energy so out of those 2000 values the minimum value it will select the minimum value it will select and that minimum value is it will declare as the ground state energy of the system and the corresponding wave function will declare as the ground state wave function for the system but of course uh, there are some uh, limitations also in the variational principle i mean in variational principle agar you ha if you know the schrodinger equation suppose you know the schrodinger equation so definitely you will solve the schrodinger equation if you know the Schrodinger equation, definitely you will solve the Schrodinger equation and you will get all the energies, the whole energy spectrum. I mean, you solve the Schrodinger equation for an infinite potential well. You solve the Schrodinger equation for an infinite potential well. So now you know that En is equals to N square pi square H cut square by 2M L square. So you know where N equals to 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 infinity. So you know the whole energy spectrum for that system. You know the ground state energy for n equals to 1. You know the first excited state for n equals to 2. The second excited state for n equals to 3. So you know the whole energy spectrum of that system. You know the whole energy spectrum for that system. You know the whole energy spectrum for that system. Okay, Arthi has asked the question, which got the minimum one will be base trial function to call ground state. Yes, actually this is the thing, I'm coming back to that point, like whenever you're solving the Schrodinger equation, you got all the wave energy values, ground state, first excited state, second excited state, third excited state, fourth excited state, fifth excited state, like this way. But when you do this by variational principle, you don't get the whole spectrum, you only get the ground state. I mean, variational principle is most famous to determine the ground states, basically, you don't get the whole energy spectrum, that's a limitation of this process. 
uh, so that's why you get the you only get the ground state in by variational principle you only get the ground state not the whole energy spectrum so yes uh, rp has asked a question probably and she has shared a perspective uh, she is saying that uh, sir okay so there are inbuilt wave functions there's maybe 2000 wave functions are there for just for example i'm saying what the software will do software will take each wave function the software will take each wave function and it will calculate the expectation value of h whatever the average values it has got whatever the average values it has got whatever the average values it has got it will write down all the values in a table now it will detect which value is the smallest one smallest average value i mean isn't it logical that you are finding out the expectation value of hamiltonian that is basically your average energy now the lowest average energy is the ground state energy that is what the software is doing it's saying this is this gives me the lowest average energy so sir this will be the ground state energy of this system that's what the software does arti now you tell me have you got have you got your answer i mean uh, did you uh, get your answer what you are looking for so it has some inbuilt wave functions in the software it will take every trial wave function it will calculate the expectation value of the hamiltonian it will get some values and definitely the lowest expectation value it will declare as the ground state energy and the corresponding wave function as the ground state wave function and the corresponding wave functions are the uh, the ground state wave functions why we always keen to find out the ground state in generally well <laughs> because mostly in case of research i told you uh, like uh, uh, basically uh, in the in the start that uh, in research basically you need to know the stable configurations of a molecule and that's why ground state is more uh, uh, important to us and that's why we need to know the ground state i mean as i told you in my case i need to sandwich a molecule i need to situate a molecule between two au electrodes so i need to know what is the stable configuration of that molecule so i need to know what is the stable configuration of the molecule stable configuration means the ground state configuration if i know the ground state then i would know that into this energy range how the molecule would look like in that energy range so whatever the temperature i have to fix so that that energy will be achieved and what will be the structure of that molecule then i would know so that's why mostly in research we are interested in the ground states i'm not i'm not saying that we are not interested in high energy states but in majority research in majority of the research you see uh, the ground state is the most uh, like interested one so that's why we look for the ground state so basically uh, in jwkb approximation i mean there is another approximation method i mean without solving the schrodinger equation you can tell me the energy eigen values there is another approximation method called the jwkb so by the jwkb method you can get all the energy spectrum but by variational principle you only get the ground state one now you can ask me sir if jwkb is much more useful if jwkb is much more useful i get the whole energy spectrum why don't we use the jwkb okay let me tell you one thing again the jwkb gives you much more accurate result i mean the exact value closer to the exact value exact value means what the ground state energy that you have got by solving the schrodinger equation the ground state energy that you have got by solving the schrodinger equation so jwkb always gives you the more accurate result but but there is a problem you cannot apply jwkb to all the systems it is only applicable to semi classical systems but this variational principle is applicable to all the systems this variational principle is applicable to all the systems this variational principle is applicable to all the systems uh, and actually we are looking for the ground state energy that's why variational principle is so much famous and that's why we have used a variational principle while implementing the density functional theory while 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 deriving the density functional theory okay fine so i think this much theory is necessary but there is a question there is a question in your mind sir what sort of question you have in your mind the question is how does the software choose the wave functions how does the software chooses the wave functions how does it know okay i have to use these wave functions okay so there are definitely some uh, good examples of doing that i mean there are definitely some good ways of doing that you see how does the software decide that which wave function to take uh, of course you would know so the wave function must have to satisfy few conditions i mean suppose i'm working for harmonic oscillator ground state energy i want to know the harmonic oscillator ground state energy so as soon as i mention it's a harmonic oscillator ground state energy you should know the ground state energy of a harmonic oscillator is an even function so the software will take all those wave functions which are even secondly it has to vanish at x equals to plus minus infinity it has to be a continuous function and it has to satisfy the 
it has to satisfy the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So definitely there are some criteria, there are some criteria which the software uses to choose the wave function, which wave function it choose for which problem. Of course, first of all, the wave function has to vanish at plus minus infinity. It has to be continuous. Okay, for the harmonic oscillator ground state you're talking about, then it has to be an even function. It has to be an even function and it must satisfy the uh, the uncertainty principle, the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. But could you please tell me which wave function is more eligible? I mean, if I ask you to guess a wave function which satisfies all these things, which wave function you will think first? I mean, what is the wave function that you will be uh, like the very quick choice? Like, okay, this wave function I can definitely try with. What is the very quick choice of wave function? Okay, you can get the answer if you know that which wave function exactly satisfies the uncertainty principle. Which wave function exactly satisfies the answer? For which wave function delta x, delta px is exactly equals to h cut by 2? Do you know this? For which wave function delta x, delta px equals exactly equals to h cut by 2? Do you know this for which wave function? Well, it's the Gaussian wave function a into e to the power of minus bx square a into e to the power of minus bx square is the Gaussian wave function. It is the only wave function which satisfies the uncertainty principle exactly. It gives you the value h cut by 2. Okay. It gives you exact value h cut by 2. That is the Gaussian wave function. It's the Gaussian wave function, of course. So, Gaussian wave function exactly satisfies the uncertainty principle. That's why whenever uh, you will see in most of the authors, if you read the books, you will get most of the trial wave functions they use are the Gaussian wave functions. Most of the trial wave functions they use are the Gaussian wave functions. But yes, the software will use uh, all these sorts of wave functions, all these sorts of wave functions. And after that, it will find out the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. It will find out the average value. So, the average value it will get. And the lowest average value it has got out of all those trial wave functions, it will declare as the ground state energy for that system. And that trial wave function, that corresponding trial wave function is the ground state wave function. Okay. Is it fine? Is it fine? You people have got it? Okay. So, now the fact is, uh, so this is the thing. Now, let me tell you one thing that variational principle, so suppose the exact value of energy is equals to for infinite potential well, we know that exact value of energy is equals to this. So by the variational, this is the value of energy which I have got by solving Schrodinger equation, I mean the exact method, the accurate method, the Schrodinger equation. But if by approximation, I mean it, if by variational, I mean without solving the Schrodinger equation, I find out the ground state energy, it will either be equal to the exact value of energy or it will, great, it will be greater than the exact value of energy. It will be either equal to the exact value of energy or it will be greater than the, equal, uh, the exact value of energy. I mean the exact value of energy means the value of energy that we have got by solving the Schrodinger equation. So either it will be equal to the uh, exact value of energy that means the energy that we have got by solving the Schrodinger equation or it will be greater than the exact value of energy. That means the variational principle always provides you the upper bound. Upper bound means that if you know the exact value is 7, it will either give you 7 or it will give you 7.3, 7.5 or something. It will always give you the upper bound. It will always give you the upper bound. So that's exactly the fact. Now how to derive the theory of variational principle? I mean, uh, you don't need to know the theory even, but still just because there are some students and who are quite uh, like... Uh, uh, inclined to know how this theory comes. So let me tell you something. Any arbitrary wave function psi, any arbitrary wave function psi, any arbitrary wave function psi, we know that the eigenvectors of a Hamiltonian are what? The eigenvectors of a Hamiltonian form a basis in the Hilbert space. I mean, eigenvector of any Hermitian operator, any uh, Hermitian operator forms a basis in the Hilbert space. And therefore, any arbitrary k can be written as sum over n, cn, psi n, where psi n are the arbitrary, where psi n are the eigenvectors of your Hamiltonian. I mean, you know that h cap psi n equal to e n psi n. I mean, psi n are the stationary states. It means these are the, these are the eigenvectors of your Hamiltonian. These are the eigenvectors of your Hamiltonian. Okay, Arti has asked some question. The result we got from Schrodinger calculation for any ground state 
and variational principle, there would be some little difference in values or it will give exact result. Okay, let me tell you something. It's a very good question. Arti, what's your, Arti Jamwal. Okay, it's a very good question. Very good question. It depends upon how accurately you are choosing the wave function. How accurately you are choosing the wave function. Okay, it will depends upon how accurately you are choosing the wave function. Of course, it will not always be equal to the exact value. Now, if you choose the wave function to be the, I mean, if you could guess the wave function, if the software could guess the wave function, so definitely the values will be more closer to the accurate value. I mean, the value which is got from Schrodinger equation. But if you don't choose it properly, I mean, if there, if you don't choose the exact, if you can't guess the ex exact wave function, then definitely the value you will get will be some difference in the values, of course. Because okay, that is that that is very much uh, easy to digest because it's a it's an approximation principle. I mean, variational principle. Okay. Uh, good morning, students. Uh, variational principle, jo hai, that is uh, uh, an approximation principle. Variational principle is an approximation principle, and since it's an approximation principle, then definitely all the time we cannot expect that we will get the exact ground state energy. Either I can get exact ground state energy if I'm lucky enough, if the software has chosen the correct, uh, has guessed the correct wave function, or it might provide me something, <laughs> or it might provide me something which is uh, greater than, just a little bit greater than the exact wave function. Okay, it depends upon one thing also, more the number of trial wave functions you use, more accuracy you approach. I mean, suppose if the, if the software uses 5000 trial wave functions, then definitely the accuracy will be more. But if the software uses maybe say 200 wave functions, so definitely the accuracy will be very less. Okay. For the So I, I hope you have got your answer. I mean, Aarti uh, probably you have got your answer. That if the software uses more trial wave functions, more trial wave functions, I mean, the number of trial wave functions is very, very high, say 5,000 or 4,000. So definitely the accuracy will be very good. I mean, because you are, it is, uh, it is uh, calculating the expectation value of the Hamiltonian for lots of wave functions, and then out of those 200 or three, uh, 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 results, it is choosing which one is the minimum energy. But uh, if it, uh, but uh, if it, uh, you know, uh, if you, if the number of trial wave functions are very less, if the number of trial wave functions are very less, then definitely I, I cannot expect that I'll get exact the, the, I mean, exact energy or something. I mean, definitely some errors will be there. Okay. The plus one as well as will be there. So any arbitrary wave function that my Gaussian software has, that's not Gaussian software, that my Gauss view software has been chosen, can be written as a linear combination of the energy eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian. Can be written as a linear combination of the energy eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian. Then tell me, what is psi psi? It has to be normalized. Okay, so without uh, uh, like neglecting the double counting, I'll take it as M, then C M star bra psi M sum over N C N cat psi N. So I can write it as like okay psi M psi N sum over N sum over M C M star C N psi M psi N. Okay. Now you know that the eigenvectors of a Hamiltonian are mutually orthonormal. Orthonormal means they, uh, they are normalized to unity with each other, uh, with itself. I mean, psi n, psi n equals to 1. And they are uh, <coughs> mutually orthogonal. They are mutually orthogonal. They give 0. The inner product is 0 when the psi, uh, when m is not equals to n. And when m equals to n, the inner, uh, the inner product will give you 1. So I can write it as like this, sum over of, this is n. This is M, C M star, C N delta M N, where delta M N is the Kronecker's delta, you would know, where delta M N is equals to 1 when M equals to N and delta M N equals to 0 when M is not equals to N. So if you do the summation, just don't, uh, just forget about N if you do the summation for M. So M starts from say 1, 2 something. So then you will get all the values. I mean, delta 1 N, 2 N, 3 N, 4 N, and all will be equals to 0 until you get a term delta n n and only that term will survive so finally you get this is equals to sum over n c n star c n that is sum over n mod c n square okay now this has to be normalized so sum over n mod c n square should be equals to 1 
This has to be normalized. That's why sum over of n mod cn square should be equals to 1. Okay. So for any arbitrary wave function, which my uh, which my uh, like uh, software has been chosen, it has to be normalized, and that's why I can say it. I can definitely write it as a linear combination of the eigenvectors of my Hamiltonian of the system. Then I can write it like this. So of course you know this would be equals to one. So sum over of n, sum over of c n square is equals to one. This angle. Okay. Well, how would I find out the expectation value of the Hamiltonian? How the software will calculate that? How the software will calculate the expectation value of the Hamiltonian for the state H psi? See, sum over of m c m star bra psi m, then H cap uh, sum over of n c n h psi n. Now I know that H cap operates on psi n always gives me e n psi n i know this and that's why over here h cap will operate upon psi n will give me en psi n i can take en outside it will be like this sum over of m cm star cn okay wait there are two summations actually uh, there are two summations actually Yes, so the first one is sum over n I can write, second one is m, then uh, of course e n p m star p n, then psi m psi n. Okay, how could I write it down? Okay, see I want the final answer in terms of n, that's why I have written the summation n outside and then summation of m. Then e n, h cap operates upon ket psi n and gives me e n ket psi n. That's why this e n is a scalar, so I have taken out over here. Then c m star c n psi m psi n. Okay, now you know this. Psi m psi n. What can you write it down? Sum over n. Same, same, very easy. This e n c m star c n and this will be equal to delta m n. Now the same case, okay, ignore this summation over m, just think about this, so you are doing the summation over m, right, so it is delta 1n, delta 2n, delta 3n, delta 4n, dot 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 dot, delta n, n, only n, n term will survive, other, all the terms are 0, that's why c n star c n, it will become, it will become what, tell me, sum over of n, e n, c n mod square. That's what it gets. Okay. That's what it gets. That's what it gets. Okay. That's what it gets. So tell me, after finding out, so this is what the software does. And this is the result what the software gets. This is the result what the software gets. The software what does what? It chooses, it gazes an arbitrary wave function. And it determines the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, and the result the software gets is sum it gets is sum, sum over of n e n c n square e n mod c n square e n mod c n square. Now tell me the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, which is of course equals to sum over of n e n mod c n square. This value will definitely be greater than equals to, e g if I could write it down sum over n mod c n square of course because for okay the first term in the summation is what e n is e1 which is the ground state so definitely the first term will be e1 c 1 square okay the first term in the summation tell me how will you do it second term e2 c2 square third term e3 c3 square Okay, now this is my the ground state, but there are lots of other terms. So I know that this is mod cn square sum over of n, this term is equals to 1. So what I'm get is this eg. Tell me, do you agree with me that this summation is greater than the ground state energy? Do you agree with me? Because there are lots of other terms, lots of other terms other than the ground state energy. So definitely the summation will be greater than, the summation will be greater than the ground state energy. Do you, so whatever expectation value the software has calculated, it will either be equal to, so definitely the E n C n square, E n mod C n square will be greater than equals to, this is equals to 1, that's why it will greater than equals to E g. 
that's why we say that variational principle always provides you the upper bound that's why we say variational principle either it will give you the exact energy either it will give you the exact exact energy or it will give you the upper bound or it will give you the upper bound it means greater than the exact energy it means greater than the exact energy or it will give you the upper bound or it will give you the upper bound okay so i think more or less i have uh, said the theory of this class or theory of this variational principle we can solve a problem very quickly and this problem is very important please write it down write it down suppose we are talking about the 1d lho one dimensional linear harmonic oscillator so what is the hamiltonian for the system tell me come on what is the hamiltonian for the system the hamiltonian is negative of h cut square by twice of m d2 dx2 plus v of x v of x is of course half m omega square x square now what is my motto what is my motto i don't want to solve schrodinger equation i just want to know what is the ground state energy of this system by variational principle by variational principle and mostly in csir i mean the uh, csir net examination you don't have to guess 2000 3000 wave functions they will provide you the wave function they will provide you the wave function you just have to find out the expectation value of f and then you have to minimize it now you might ask me sir if they are providing me only one wave function so definitely the expectation value of the hamiltonian will be only a one value how to minimize it then so i will tell you no wait in one wave function also you can vary something suppose they have provided you the gaussian wave function a into e to the power of minus bx square of course it's a one wave function but what is the variational parameter in this wave function what thing you can vary and you get different wave functions it is b you can vary this value of b and you get different gaussian wave functions so in exam mostly they ask this sort of questions they will give you an wave function suppose it's the uh, this is the gaussian wave function they give you so they will ask you for what value of b you will get the ground state energy and what is the ground state energy so how will you do it for what value of e you will get the ground state energy and what is that ground state energy so how will you do it how will you do it so first of all let me tell you let me just say the problem so i don't want to solve schrodinger equation i want to use variational principle and i have two years and what is the trial wave function trial wave function what is the trial wave function buddy what is the trial wave function it is a into e to the power of minus bx square a into e to the power of minus bx square what is the trial wave function this now i have to normalize this wave function first i have to normalize this wave function i need to know the value of a i have to normalize okay so please remember the result and you i am doing it for you but please remember the result so psi psi has to be equals to 1 it means therefore a square integration minus infinity to plus infinity uh, e to the power of minus 2 bx square e to the power of minus 2 bx square dx should be equals to 1 and by solving this integration it's a very easy gamma function you can write it 2 a square 0 to infinity e to the power of minus 2 bx square dx equals to 1 but solve it by the gamma function which is very easy even an 8th standard student can do that so after that you can solve a is equals to what 2b by pi to the power of 1 by 4 that's what you get okay that's what you get so this is the value of a a means the normalization constant this is the value of a a means the normalization constant then what you will do you will find out the expectation value of hamiltonian but sir expectation value of hamiltonian equals to expectation value of kinetic energy plus expectation value of potential energy now we know that kinetic energy is equals to negative of h cut square by 2m d2 dx2 d2 dx2 please find this out so expectation value of t equals to integration minus infinity to plus infinity psi negative of h cut square by 2m d2 dx2 okay d2 dx2 and this is psi okay and of course dx dx you do it uh, i mean when you're writing this bracket so there is no meaning of putting the dx because bracket is just a ket notation so all i can do i can remove this okay i can just say psi star psi that is more 
logical. Psi star negative h square by 2m d to dx to psi dx. Okay. Now you know the value of psi. Psi is equals to what? A into e to the power of minus bx square where a is equals to 2b by pi to the power of 1 by 4. I think you can solve it. You have to differentiate twice this function. Then you have to calculate the integration you will get after it, it will be a gamma function which is a very easy to solve gamma function integrals and after solving this gamma function integrals it will just take time just uh, it's a mathematics don't ask me. <clears throat> so gamma function integral it will give you what h cut square b by twice of m. This is the expectation value of kinetic energy. 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 After that, after that, you have to find out the expectation value of potential energy because you want to find out the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. So it means you have to do negative minus infinity to plus infinity psi star v of x into psi dx. Now tell me what is v of x? It will be mod a square minus infinity to plus infinity psi star psi means e to the power of minus 2bx square v of x is equals to half m omega square x square dx. Now again you can solve this integration by the gamma function. You can solve this integration by the gamma function. And the answer you will get is m omega square by 8b. You can solve this integration by gamma function. Okay, if you don't know how to solve what are the formulas, it is like you can understand. You can solve the integration by gamma function. I mean gamma function you know, right? How to solve the gamma integrations you probably would know. You can solve this integration by gamma functions. So you can solve it. So tell me, what is the expectation value of the Hamiltonian now? It is the expectation value of kinetic energy, sir, plus expectation value of the potential energy. That means h cut square b by twice of m plus m omega square by at b. This is the Hamiltonian. But tell me, what is... so? Now they are asking what is the minimum value of this expectation value of Hamiltonian. So of course it will depend upon B. So in question they have asked you for what value of B you will get the minimum ground state energy and what is that ground state energy. So of course what you have to do to find out the minimum value of a function. First of all this is your expectation value. This is your expectation value. First of all you will take the first order derivative of this function equate it to zero find out the value of b from there then you will take the second derivative and uh, put that value of b and you will check if it is greater than zero or not if it is positive or not if it is positive then that value of b is the minimum value that is the minimum that is the value of b for which the function will have the minimum value then you will put that b into that function and you will get the ground state energy i hope you got it so what you have to do is to get h minimum ddt ddb of expectation of h equals to zero you put it and you solve the equation. If you do that, you will get b equals to m omega by 2h cut. Now you can put this function over here. So h minimum expectation of h minimum equals to expectation of h at b equals to m omega by 2h cut. m omega by 2h cut. And then you get it is equals to h cut omega by 2. Then you get h cut omega by 2. So this is the fact. I mean you find out the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. Then you minimize it. How do you minimize it? There is a variational parameter b. So you take the differentiation with respect to b. You take equal to 0. Then from you find out the value of b. You again take the second differentiation. You put that value of b. And you see that it is uh, definitely minimum. Definitely positive. That means it shows the minimum value of that function. So definitely h minimum will be h cut omega by 2 and that is your ground state energy from variational principle. So what is the ground state energy you have got from variational principle? Sir, eg. eg is what? h cut omega by 2. That has come from variational principle. Okay, what is the ground state energy you have got by solving the Schrodinger equation? What is the ground state energy you have got by solving the Schrodinger equation? Sir, h cut omega by 2. Please recall, by solving the Schrodinger equation, you got the same ground state energy. By solving the Schrodinger equation, you also got the same ground state energy. By solving the Schrodinger equation, you also got the same ground state energy. 
so that's why i hope now you people got acha why did i get so accurate result why did i get so accurate result why did i get so accurate result because the gazing of wave function was very good okay tell me the ground state energy of a harmonic oscillator m omega by pi h cut to the power of 1 by 4 into exponential of negative of m omega x square by 2 h cut by 2 h cut. tell me buddy m omega by pi square to the power of 1 by 4 exponential of m omega x square by 2 h cut doesn't it a Ga it's a gaussian function doesn't it looks like a gaussian function doesn't it looks like a gaussian function tell me so this is your a e to the power of negative of b x square doesn't it looks like a gaussian function of course it is sir this the ground state is a gaussian function and we take our trial wave function for variational principle we take our trial wave function for variational principle we take our trial wave function for variational principle as a gaussian function that's why we got the exact result 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 you take some sort of another wave function you take another wave function you will not get the exact result suppose if i ask you to take this wave function a square minus x square into a what is the normalized form of this wave function root over of 15 by 16 a to the power of 5 a square minus x square you take this as the gaussian you take this as the trial wave function of course you will not get the exact ground state you will not get the exact ground state if you take this as the gaussian wave function you will not get the exact ground state so yes this sort of things are there so all it depends upon the trial wave function how betterly how in the better way you can choose the trial wave function more better trial wave function you can guess more accurate result you will get and more accurate result means your result from the variational principle will be more closer to the result obtained from by the schrodinger equation obtained by the schrodinger but here yes, of course there is a limitation that from variational principle you don't get all the energy states you don't get all the energy state by variational principle you don't get all the energy state all you get is just uh, that uh, ground state or if you're working for fast excited state so first excited state like that not not for much most states i mean it is not quite popular like quite popular or reputed to find out the high energy state no only the ground state is something we ask from variational principle okay we seek from variational principle so i think this class was more or less helpful aap log zara bata do please tell me all you people that was the class helpful or not i mean you if you didn't have any sort of idea about the variational principle now you probably have an idea and a, a perspective a picture in your mind that what this variational principle is all about how to choose trial wave function do we choose gaussian wave function in all cases no of course not i have told uh, that how to choose the trial wave function mostly in your csr exams they will give you the trial wave function they will provide you the trial wave function now if you are asking me that how uh, the trial wave functions are actually chosen by the software which we use in case of our phd or research career so in that software there are some inbuilt wave functions now you might ask me that sir who has implemented the software how did he choose ki which software has to be implemented which uh, eigen which energy wave functions has to be implemented so of course we take it upon some sort of criteria number 1 suppose you are talking about the a uh, ground state energy of a harmonic oscillator the first thing you should know is that it must vanish at x tends to plus minus infinity the wave function has to be square integrable the wave function has to be uh the wave function has to be continuous throughout the interval the wave function has to satisfy the uh, heisenberg's uncertainty principle and since we are talking about the harmonic oscillator ground state the wave function has to be an even wave function so that is how we take the trial wave functions i mean i think probably you have got your answer or how the software chooses the wave function i think probably you have got your answer okay the last question at last the variable and constant are most appropriately match the real wave function match the real wave function yes but we are not something we are not seeking for the wave functions basically we are seeking for the ground state energy so definitely yes so i think the class was more or less helpful so if you people have any other questions you can definitely ask me you can definitely ask me in the class right now if you people have any other questions you can definitely so this is all and uh, about this variational principle and there are now there are the problems so whatever the kind of problems they provide you in csr 
that gives you a trial wave function. It's a very easy problem. I mean, if some sort of questions are coming from variational principle, you cannot expect an easy question than that. In variational principle, all you have to do is they will give you some sort of a trial wave function. You have to find out the expectation value of the Hamiltonian for that system in that trial wave function. You will get the expectation value. Then you have to minimize that Hamiltonian, the expectation value of that Hamiltonian with respect to the variational parameter. <coughs> then you have to minimize the expectation value of the Hamiltonian with respect to the variational parameter. And that minimum value of the expectation, the minimum expectation value of that Hamiltonian is your ground state energy. So I think more or less we have, uh, we are at the end of this class. So I think thank you. And, and I don't know like if somebody is asking any questions or not. Okay, so there's no question. Thank you for all your attention and uh, taking this class. Thank you very much. I hope more or less all of you are a bit uh, benefited by this class and we will take the next of the classes. So please join the next lectures. And there is a small request. If you find this class helpful, then please do like it, uh, subscribe the channel and share this class with your friends so that they can also watch it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.